Hello everybody. I thought I would just do a video to show um, one of the games of my Mark Fedrich 1976 replay using uh, this National Pastime Next Generation uh, board reader version uh, 5.05. .05. In this version, you not only get a box score, um, in this game it happens to be one to one right now, uh, we're starting the bottom of the sixth. So we have a pretty good game. Dennis Leonard for the Royals against the Bird for Detroit. So you uh, get a box score. You also get a play-by-play. -play for each inning, which is really cool. So um, Ron's done a really nice job on uh, putting this uh, board reader together for playing uh, National Pastime. All the cards are free online. So uh, you just need to print them out or use them in PDF in some form. Uh, but this card reader will present the cards, uh, give you the box score. You can also compile the stats at the end of the game. And I've been providing the, uh, the ongoing stats uh, on the forum. So the main tab shows the ball game. Now I've kind of jazzed this up um, from the basic version that's put out. All I did was do some formatting, add some pictures. Um, I've added some conditional formatting that you'll see when uh, there's outs. This will turn red, green for hits. But you got to be careful because uh, there's a lot going on in this thing. And so every little cell has something going on in it that you can't even see. So uh, you have to be very careful when you uh, mess around with these spreadsheets. Um, there's a lot going on and Ron's uh, doing a great job making things happen. But you just have to be careful. I've messed up a couple of these just trying a few things that I thought might work. But OK, getting to the game, we're at the top of the sixth. So we're still in the top of the sixth uh, with Kansas City batting. Amos Otis is up with one out. And uh, I've moved the roll buttons and the at bats and the IBB button to up here. And there's a double. Amos Otis puts him on second base. George Brett's up now. This is not looking good for the bird. <laughs> yep, see, there's a double run in. John Mayberry, senior. Out of first runner holds. You can see a dice roll that happens on screen, too. I've just kind of uh, hidden it so we don't see the dice roll. I just wanted to kind of see the uh, PRN, which indicates what the dice roll was. And then this is the result, which I put conditional formatting on and how McRae flies out, and that uh, will end the inning. So now the bird's down by a score two to one. And it's always fun for the bird replays. I've learned uh, you can't really rely on Detroit's offense for a whole lot. Having said that, look at that. Uh, there's a 33 first column roll and a 15 a second column roll for Rusty Staub. And home run ties the game. Lately, I gotta say, they have been putting some runs on the board. There's a ground out to second base. Alex Johnson. Single. It's running a little slower with the video happening at this happening at the same time here on my computer. So, all right, there's an error. I need to cover code what an error is. Um, I just like kind of getting that feedback visually. All right, so now we're going to have runners on first and second. We're getting into the weaker part of the uh, Tigers lineup here. We'll see what happens. Fielder's choice. Runner forced out at third. Two outs. Still have runners on first and second. Bruce Kim, come on. Yep, round out. 
Hop out of silence. Jamie Quirk line drive out. Buck Martinez, Royals catcher. Strike out. And Freddie Potek. Fly out. All right, come on, Tigers. Do something. Top of the order. All right, seal. Single and steal. And Ron LaFleur does that a lot. Come on, Tom. Yes. Uh, but he didn't get the runner in. We got runners on first and third. No outs. Ben Oglevy. Strong bat. What's he going to do? Oh, snap. Would you look at that? On a roll of 11. Ha. All right. Let's register that one. That gives the bird a three-run buffer. And brings up Rusty Stop. Ground out the shortstop. Jason Thompson. They do have some power in this lineup. It's just sometimes I'll go long stretches of just no run production. But not lately in this replay. They've been scoring four or five runs a game, I gotta say. I've been jaded by my previous replays, I guess. Two outs, Alex Johnson. Frank White, top of the eighth, leads it off for the Royals, of course, with a single. It's amazing how many complete games Mark Fidrich completed in 1976. I bet 90% of his starts were complete games. Some of them went extra innings, 11, 12 innings, and he still completed them. All right, there's Fidrich's choice at second. That'll put Cowens at first. Oh, here's an error. First and second for George Britt. Getting dangerous here. Fly out. And a P runner goes to third. These guys are uh, P holds. So these guys are fast. They're going to be moving. Or at least uh, Cowens will. You can see he's on third base now. John Mayberry. Potent bat. Ugh. Boy. Here we go. It's going to be a close one. All right. We got a 5-3 to three game now. I'll make a raise up. Mm, mm, mm. 5-4. to four. Going to hurt uh, Federich's ERA, even if he does get a win. All right, they get out of that inning. Tigers, bottom of the eighth. Can we get some insurance runs, please? There's a single, leadoff single. Rodriguez. Fly out right field. Fidrich's personal catcher every game, Bruce Kim. Fly out center field. He must have a, a cannon for an arm. He, every game that I've done replays for Detroit, uh, his rating on his arm has always been good. I didn't really pay much attention to uh, Bruce Kim in 76 when I was watching the Fidrich as a 13-year-old teenager. Buck Martinez grounds out. Freddie Patex up. Struck him out. We're one out away from a victory for the bird in a game that he lost in real life 
and he got it. But he did give up four runs. I have to check, though. There was an error. So they may not all have been earned when Kansas City scored those runs. Let's see. Here's where they s scored on a single fielder's choice error fly out. So these are unearned runs, two unearned runs. And you do need to note that when you compile statistics. You need to manually know what your unearned runs are. So there are two unearned runs. And I don't think the box score picks that up. Let's see. No. Right, it did. It certainly did. So his ERA will not be hurt that much. So um, let me make sure I registered that last out. I've been known not to register the last out. Okay. All right. So um, after the game, I'm just going to note, uh, and I, again, this is conditional formatting. Just turns that uh, the, the losing pitcher's red and the winning pitcher will be green. And then we'll compile the stats. So it did recognize the unearned runs that were scored against Fidrich. So um, forgot there was an error in the inning. Have you verified your earned runs? And I was going to, but this already picked it up. That was really cool. So now I'm going to throw the stats into the spreadsheet where I'm keeping the stats. And this is fairly quick. A little slower with my video running in the background. So now if I go to that stat sheet, I can show you um, where we're at on this replay. So uh, Fedrich lost a game earlier in the replay that he won in real life. In this one, he actually uh, lost it in real life. So he picks up an additional win, and uh, his ERA uh, went down a little bit, 2.43. And if we go to actual... He was 9-2 and two at this point. Um, he's had a couple really low-scoring games lately. It'll go up as the season nears its end. I notice he'll, he'll get up around two, the low twos. So the way the replay's going, if it can maintain, and as the Birds ERA comes back up near the end, um, it's looking like it might zero in on it. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Uh, again, the Bird gets the win. And you got to see it. And uh, there's your final numbers, the box score on this one. Um, and I just kind of wanted to show you what I've done with the board reader with my little customizations. Again, you have to be careful. Um, but I just wanted to um, kind of jazz it up a little bit for the replay. All right, thanks for watching.